Biden's list of excuses to the long process of trying to repeal Obamacare. There have been several controversial but memorable moments in the world of politics this year. Here to help us break down the top political turkeys of 2017, GOP communications specialist and speech writer T.J. McCormick. T.J., happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Good morning. Yeah, thanks for joining us here on this beautiful Thanksgiving day. Good to uh, be uh, here. We're here to talk turkey, but not, right not the it. traditional kind of turkey that everyone's no, thinking of. No, no, right? the political kind, <laughs> the foot in the mouth kind. Yeah. Uh huh. Now let's get right to our very first political top turkey. Is sure. it is uh, Hillary mm. Clinton. Oh, no drum roll there? Uh, no, no, no drumstick roll. No, uh, no. Hillary Clinton. You know, she, uh, she, 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 uh, she comes out of the woods after after spending some time on some sort of self-imposed sabbatical, uh, taking selfies and foraging for nuts and berries. And uh, Hillary comes out, and you would think that she finds some humility in there. Did what? she? Hang on. Yeah. Let me just give it to you in her own words. Uh -huh. We have a little clip. I think you may appreciate. Ah. Because of the pressures from outside forces, because of the reality TV candidate I was running against. The Comey letter was the proximate cause. The very clear policy of the Republican administration in Wisconsin to shrink the electorate and suppress votes certainly uh, cost me votes. <laughs> so, you know, that uh, that list is longer you know, than the side dishes. She's going she's gonna to sit down today and blame the stuffing. Uh, you know, she, 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 this, she is absolutely re unwilling to take any responsibility at all. She had a great opportunity to take, take uh, some responsibility, show some humility and uh, humanize herself. And she blew it. The name of her book should be What Happened to Me. You know, <laughs> now, she's not the only one. Who's your next turkey? Yeah. You're, you're bipartisan in your turkey picking. I am bipartisan in my turkey <laughs> picking. And uh, I believe that the skinny repeal, the tacky terminology of the year, uh, you know, here come the Republicans running for years and years on uh, repeal and replace, repeal and replace. And they do neither. And then they have uh, they come back to us and say, you know, we're going to do a skinny repeal. We're going to we're going to gimmick, give, give you a gimmick here. We're going to take out some of the stuff and leave you with the rest of the garbage and let this thing collapse under its own weight. And uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. And they have done nothing in an entire year, the Republicans. And they've got the House, the Senate, the White House, and they can't get it done. And so shame so, on that. And it just years. smarted to have the, the, the even the. The thin one, even the thin one fail as well. Yeah, the yeah. Extra no, no. And real quick, I want to get one yeah. more in, which sure. people may have forgotten, but mm -hmm. it is a obscure congressman by the name mm. of Ted. He's your last target. Ted Liu is this is this is so this just is so out of touch and, and terribly tone deaf. Ted Liu, in the wake of the terrible Texas massacre at the church there, they're holding a, a moment of silence on the floor of the, of the Congress and he leaves. He gets up and he walks out of a moment of silence, not because he's overcome with emotion or because he suddenly doesn't feel well. He steps out to do a Facebook live. He goes out to do a social media in this day and age of me, me, me. Usually the one thing that brings us together is coming together after a tragedy. But this guy gets up and goes out and he makes a posting about how uh, stricter gun laws are going to end these these moments, which wait, that may or may not happen. But you know what? It can wait. Take a moment. Well, it's I'll not tell about you. What you. won't wait is a commercial break that we've got coming up. TJ, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for bringing Enjoy. your turkeys to us. Great news. She likes you. She really likes you. She being the lefty comic Sarah Silverman and you evil Trump voters. Yes, after so much hate and bile, she finally realized you people aren't so bad. In fact, you might even be people. I guess we'll let you live. In a new show, Sarah travels the country interviewing rubes who don't live near Whole Foods. It's like Wild Kingdom for gender studies majors. And now she claims after meeting so many Trump voters, she likes them. She loves them. Yes, what a surprise. You can feel comfortable around people who you don't agree with. So this is progress for a progressive, especially one who called for a military overthrow of Trump, a coup, while actual riots were going on. Imagine if anyone had listened. So this is a big step. For a progressive, the personal is always political, where the right isn't just wrong, but evil. So good for Sarah for deciding that you're okay. You've met the approval of someone paid to talk to you. She appreciates you the way a cat appreciates yarn. Will her new enlightenment hold? I don't know. I remember how Sarah ridiculed Andrew Breitbart, not to his face, but when she took his seat after he let the, left the set on Bill Maher's show. How are you? Sticky here. Yeah, well, there was... 
in general. Uh, yeah, right. You're not just saying the conservative. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, that was classy. She was nice to him in the green room, but then mm -hmm. did that when he's not around. But it proves her point. It's easy to be a jerk to someone when they're not there. Wrapped in a cocoon of confirmation bias, it's easy to hate millions of people and over time for them to hate you back. But I hope that Sarah's changed. Truly, anything would be an improvement. I'm going to be positive about yeah, this, Kimberly. I, th I think that, that maybe, uh, maybe she's positive. Okay. <laughs> no, maybe she's she's woke, as Don't the left me. says, that she realizes that p just because you have a disagreement doesn't make them evil. Okay. Well, this is why people have to have an open mind and actually listen to others, uh, their viewpoints, and try to understand and find common ground instead of being, you know, discriminating and having biases against other individuals that you're not even taking the time to listen to. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe, you know, hope springs eternal, who knows, but mm -hmm. at least maybe it's an example to some people that they might want to reconsider, just like all the people that were horrific, right. you know, to the women that accused Bill Clinton that are now coming out and think, oh, wait a mm -hmm. second, we want to apologize for that. We were wrong with what we did. You know, Dana, we were going to show a clip of this, but we weren't allowed to get, a we weren't able to get approval from Hulu? for it. From, no, from, uh, I don't know who. Yeah, Silverman Inc. Yeah. Vulture. I think it's called Vulture. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what that means. Anyway, uh, do you think she's sincere or is she just doing a job? Well, I, so I read a feature story about her several months ago as she was getting ready, as she got this series underway. Yeah. And, and she talked about what she hoped to achieve in it. Mm -hmm. And it's really not, it isn't that easy to publicly admit that True. you were wrong. Yeah. Um, or that you have some work to do or that you have to go out. And so perhaps it is sincere. But I also think, you know, she's supposedly a comedian. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways to have a relationships with people that maybe you don't agree with is through humor. True. And, like, and just laugh about it. Politics is really not that important. It shouldn't be. Actually, that's a great point. Uh, Thank you. And you seem surprised. No, yeah, yeah, yeah I am surprised. Did you see that? He was like, whoa. Yeah, she like, usually saves her great points Marcus for the earlier Dan. show. Oh. The show with her name on it. Oh, okay. so we get We get the leftovers. Oh. We, get the, we get the turkey sandwiches. We don't get the turkey. I know the feeling. You know, uh, like Brian, but the sandwich. point is, uh, when if politics takes a large part of your life, then you can be very angry. You have a lot of hobbies. or so You play soccer with, with kids. You coach. So, but Fox and Friends is only a tiny part of your life. Do I have to? Uh, do I have to agree with your premise? I don't even like. The, did you even ask a question? First, I have to disclaimer. He knows nothing about me. Okay? I don't even. I don't even. When he sees me in the green room, he walks the other way. And did he you hear what he said about guys. your hair machine in yeah. your office the, the other night? The, the, I was like nuts. I did not know that. Uh, so, uh, I got to get that DVR. I get all the information here. from Deucey. Right. That's Thanks good. for watching. No, that's twice. That's good. By the way, I got to go to Blockbuster get the episode. Which yeah. day was it? It will be fantastic. By the way, she goes on to say in this story where she says we haven't changed each other's minds but i like these trump people i think it's a business decision when asked about trump we're waiting for him to hit bottom there is no bottom he doesn't understand what happiness is if he isn't ruining right. people's lives and destroying the planet my heart would break for him he's a damaged damaged person i don't see much conversion here or much open-mindedness but, like <laughs> but i like you i like right. the people yeah. that voted for right. you right. and he's far happier than she decision. has any yeah. idea yeah. Do you think right. after, he's very happy. He's Mark. very happy. He doesn't have a care in the world. He has a good time. He Mark. has a nice family. Here's my cynical grandkids. observation. She called for Complain. a military overthrow of, of Donald Trump. And I think she's seeing that her career is kind of like going down. And she realizes maybe alienating half of the country is a bad idea. Wow. I, I didn't get that at all. In fact, I, I, th I think she's been around in recent days promoting this new show. Yes. And having some success promoting I don't know how well the show does. But no, I don't. I don't have that impression. At all. I, it's, this is more like Thanksgiving dinner to me. Yeah. This is like, oh, you know. So you know, Uncle Joe walks in with the Make America Great Again hat. Right. And so, am I supposed to like just be mocking? Should I be like, you know, oh, I, I can't stand this guy or whatever? And then you turn. Turns out, hey, Joe's a pretty good guy. Yeah. We just have some serious political disagreement. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I think you can have serious political yes, fear well. even of Donald Trump and his presidency. But the idea that you would talk to them, this is what we were discussing earlier. This is a good thing. I think it's a good thing, but I, it, it's a good thing when you're not paid to do it. And it's like, so now she's doing it because she's got a salary. And she wouldn't have done and this she before. She sees Kathy Griffin. And yeah. Kathy Griffin is, yeah. was, was one of the hottest comedians around. And now she has, she's PNG. so angry. Yeah. She's she so angry. She can't head. get on CNN. She's yelling at she's Andy claiming, Cohen. But the funny thing is she's claiming Hollywood is blacklisting her. Over Trump, excuse me. Hollywood hates Trump. She, she, I mean, they, exactly. I'm sure. I mean, how, do you, how does what, how does that make sense, Greg? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. sense. It doesn't make it. I think she's just whining because. But she, what did, she was on? Was she on Bravo? 
Yeah, no problem. For, yeah. I mean, she she wasn't like the biggest comedian. She was a train wreck. Right. By the way, she was by, successful. by the way, you know, she was doing this tour with Frank Rich, who used to write for yes. the Times and writes for New York Magazine. Yeah. So it's not as if Frank Rich. I don't think Frank Rich is a Trump fan. Hate no. to hate him. Right. So I. So my impression is this was her speaking from the heart, and I would think that. From your perspective, I know you're glad to have Hillary around, glad to I have love her. glad to play identity love politics, her. grievance politics, Me resentment. Too. But I mean, goodness gracious, give the lady some credit. I have well, she, she, give who she's credit? one of the three Sarah people Sol that blocked me on oh. Twitter. Who? Not Alec Hillary. Baldwin, Keith Olbermann, and Sarah Silverman blocked me on Twitter. That is like having three the, little yeah. medals. Yeah. Little yeah. medals. Yeah, it's three Look at how them little medals. You are. But, but I do think it's going to boomerang. I think people, the anti-Trump stuff is getting so staid. I look yeah. for things to change. When you invite me back next year at this time, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we're going to talk about how people <laughs> are taking on the Democratic Party on stage. Oh, yeah? Or is that after we discuss the, the impeachment? Uh, oh, South, Park, South Park does not do any bashing on Trump because they say it's just so predictable and hackneyed.